Uh, greetings friends as you know on this channel we do i do promote the biblical truth one of the essential biblical truths about the identity of the modern house of israel i consider that to be of vital importance to be understood otherwise we could not really understand the bible because the bible is the book of israel from cover to cover from the genesis to revelation and nevertheless it's history of the house of israel and of course other nations are mentioned in the bible as well uh, with the names of their ancestors, and they're mentioned usually when they come in contact with Israel it himself. Now, uh, those there are those who, of course, would vehemently oppose that and say how, no, it's not true that England is, uh, or the British Isles are also descendants of, of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There are others who would claim that, no, Northwest Europeans are not descendants of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Americans are not the sons of Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and so on. I'm not going to spend time on their absurd comments and their absurd claims because they're just, they're just not really, uh, uh, they don't merit, they don't merit any, any attention. If nothing, I've always told you, if nothing else, heraldry does testify who certain nations are. Why certain nations do have a walking lion, which is, by the way, the uh, also the uh, symbol of Jerusalem? Explain to me the flag of Ulster or Northern Ireland. Explain to me the flag of Northern Ireland, if unless you know the Bible history. Explain to me other parts of the of the like unicorn on the British royal uh, emblem, unless. You knew the prophecy. Explain to me all of those, all of those uh, national symbols and anthems, unless you know the prophecy. I'm holding in my hand a book entitled Did Our Lord Visit Britain. It's really a booklet, rather. It was published first in April 1936. Uh, the, the, the edition that I have is the ninth revised edition from 2008. And I want to read you the unofficial anthem of England. And it is very important. And you tell me, how can we understand the unofficial anthem, uh, 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 anthem of England unless we do know Bible history and unless we do understand who is the descendant of, of the ancient house of Israel today? Because this unofficial anthem makes no sense. Yes, there are, there are, there are reports that uh, Jesus Christ visited Britain. And there is a house in Lustonbury, I believe, which says this is the house of Joseph of Arimathea and Jesus Christ. Well, why should that, why should that surprise anyone if you know the history? The history is Joseph of Arimathea was uncle to Mary, Jesus' mother. Joseph of Arimathea was a Roman citizen <coughs> and he also traded with tin for the uh, benefits of the Roman Empire. So he traded with the British, with British Isles, for the, uh, you know, for the, for the benefits of the Roman Empire. Now, since Jesus Christ, uh, Christ's father or stepfather died earlier, when he was about 12, it was a custom in the Jewish society that the oldest uh, son would be taking care of the family. And it was a custom in the Jewish society that usually an older sibling like Joseph of Arimathea, would become a kind of a mentor, teacher, mentor of, uh, of, of, of that uh, person who will be now taking responsibility, family responsibilities. Now, since Joseph of Arimathea was a Roman citizen, should we, should we speculate that Jesus Christ was uh, also a Roman citizen, that he would get Roman citizenship? Yes, of course. Because if Jesus Christ would be in his service, and if he would be in his... Uh, under his mentorship, then why would he receive the uh, the Roman citizenship? So you see, there is that explanation. People say, "Oh, where where was Christ? Where was Christ uh, between the age of twelve and thirty? When we find him, we find him at the age of twelve. He was uh, he was there. He remained at the temple and was having serious conversations with temple officials and uh, priests." And then all of a sudden we have no account of him until he was 30 when he goes to the, uh, to the synagogue in Nazareth. And he says, reads a portion of the scripture of Isaiah. He says, in your ears, this scripture has been fulfilled today, which of course caused quite a stir in the 
synagogue congregation because he basically quoted the scripture referring to the Messiah who would come. But he would not come only once, he would come twice. First time he came in human flesh, he was, uh, you know, embodied. He came into human flesh, grew up as a man, and of course was crucified and died. Second time he's not coming in human flesh. He's coming in full power and glory to destroy this system, this neo-Babylonian system of exploitation and decay and destruction, and to establish the much desired and much needed kingdom of God. So anyway, why would there be in Glastonbury a house with a description like that? And, again, explain to me the flag of Northern Ireland, explain to me various other national symbols, unless you know the Bible history. And explain to me the unofficial anthem of England. It was written by William Blake, who lived from 1757 until 1827. And it's an official English anthem called Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Where would they in the world, would they get idea about Jerusalem? And you can hear that anthem on YouTube, and you can, I'm going, just going to read it for you, because sometimes perhaps some of those words might be scrambled, and you may not really understand them. But let me read them for you. From this publication that I mentioned, did our Lord visit Britain. Jerusalem. And did those feet in ancient time walk upon England's mountains green? And it was the holy Lamb of God on England's pleasant pastures seen. And did the countenance divine shine forth upon our clouded hills? And was Jerusalem built here among those dark satanic mills? Those dark satanic mills, allusion to the Druids and the, 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 their, their own uh, uh, holy places and so on. But have you noticed the Holy Lamb of God seen on England's pleasant pastures? Interesting. Let's read on. Bring me my bow of burning gold. Bring me my arrow of desire. Bring me my spear, O clouds, unfold. Bring me my chariots of fire. I'll not cease from mental fight, nor shall my sword sleep in my hand. Till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. Built Jerusalem. Yes, Jerusalem will be built again. Not on England's green and pleasant land, because what is prophesied for the England's green and pleasant land, because of the sins of its inhabitants, will be a total destruction by your ancient enemies called Germans. So, the Anglo-Saxon world, as well as the rest of the house of Israel, uh, of this day will be completely destroyed. And there is a prophecy in Ezekiel chapter 6 and chapter 5 that indicates that only 10% of British will survive. But the land will be completely destroyed and those who survive the coming great tribulation will be indeed taken back to their own land in a event called the second exodus. The soon coming second exodus there is a there is a teaching on this channel on the second exodus and uh, I warmly recommend that you hear it because it is one of the greatest Bible prophecies. Now the second exodus is also referenced in the Bible uh, on, in various scriptures which I'm just going to give you now as a list so that you can check it out if you care to do so. And there are plenty of those scriptures so I'll just uh, perhaps give you only a few. Deuteronomy 30, verse 3, 4, and 5. Leviticus 26, verse 44 and 45. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 6 through 7. Psalm 14, verse 7. Psalm 53, verse 6. Psalm 85, verse 1 and 2. Psalm 126, verses 1 through 6. Psalm 147, verses 2 and, uh, and 3. Isaiah 6, verse 13. Isaiah 10, verse 20 through 22. Isaiah 19, verse 20, 21, all the way through 25. Ezekiel 28, verse 25 and 27. Ezekiel 34, verses 11 through 14. Ezekiel 36, verse 24 through 27. Ezekiel 35 and 39, the chapters 35 and 39. 
Oh, Hosea chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. Hosea 6, verse 10 and 11. Joel chapter 3, verse 1. Micah chapter 2, verse 12. Sophonia chapter 3, verse 20. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 7 and 8. Zechariah 10, verse 8 through 11. Uh, the Gospel of John, verse 16 of chapter 10. And there are other scriptures that I'll just say that I'll just list those few. So, yes, in England's pleasant land, Jerusalem will not be rebuilt. Uh, it will be rebuilt in its own place. It will be rebuilt in the very land that does belong to England and uh, to belongs to the uh, to the tribe of Ephraim, of which English are descent. Speaking of speaking of the British Isles, you'll find on this channel several expositions or lessons or messages that speak about the uh, origin of the British people. Origin of the British people. So, uh, English people are descendants of Ephraim. Uh, Scottish people do have a mixture of Jewish, but uh, also Simeonites. The people of Wales show uh, great characteristics of the tribe of Levi, believe it or not. Uh, the people of Ireland are actually the, from Dan. Uh, in fact, they are those who left the Dan, the tribe of Dan, left the uh, way marks on the way where Israelites were migrating from their, from their captivity. They were they were basically uh, taken by the Assyrians to the shores of the Black Sea. And then through the valley of Danube, which used to be called Ishtar, they actually, through the valley of Danube, migrated all the way to northwest Europe. And of course, they named Danube after their father Dan. And it was also one of those way marks to show us where the Israelites were migrating. And they were migrating all the way to Denmark, meaning the resting place of Dan. Many of them then crossed the channel and they settled Ireland. And then we have the Dan, Dan, Dun, uh, in the in the names of various toponyms in Ireland, so their Irish people are descendants of Dan of the uh, of the tribe of Dan. So uh, that's the British Isles. While Manasseh became one nation under God and separated from Ephraim in its due course, as it was prophesied, anyhow. And then, of course, it was said that uh, Ephraim was going to uh, grow above and beyond, uh, like a grape, beyond and over the fences of their neighbors, meaning the colonizing power Ephraim became. And therefore, we have the colonies now, uh, like Canada, like New Zealand, like Australia. So, dear friends, as you can see, uh, the Bible did predict the world events. The Bible did predict the world history. And, yes, Jerusalem will be rebuilt in its own land. And uh, the uh, remnant of English people, the remnant of the British Isles, will be taken in the second exodus to their own land, the promised land, and there, and then, will they be rebuilding Jerusalem indeed. So once again, the unofficial anthem of England shows us, shows us beyond any doubt, that English people are indeed descendants of the house of Israel, whose capital in ancient times, in the Old Testament times, was indeed Jerusalem. Well, the fact that the English anthem speaks about the Holy Lamb of God, whose feet were, <laughs> were walking above the pleasant English land, just tells us, uh, again, beyond a doubt, that Jesus Christ, the Son, the Son of God, the Lamb of God, was in Great Britain. And, uh, in fact, even the early Celtic church, British church, uh, in the first and the second century, observed that the, 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 the days that the Lord commanded, the holidays that the Lord commanded, meaning the Sabbath and the annual holidays that Jesus Christ, as the Old Testament uh, God, established with Israel at that time. So the Bible history is very exciting and it's not boring at all. Uh, and I hope that in due course you'll be able to discover more and more Bible history through this channel because this is the... Uh, this is the purpose of the channel, to spread the uh, true Bible history to all of you and to show to all of you and manifest to you how exciting, how logical, and how beautiful it is. Until some next time, all the best, may God bless you, and goodbye, friends.